space-time is constantly being perturbed by gravitational waves that are propagating through the cosmos. But while we know we're constantly being bombarded by these waves, they're incredibly difficult to detect. This is because the wavelengths are so massive and the perturbations are so small. So scientists need to think of ingenious ways to detect these tiny signals. LIGO was an impressive engineering feat, but in this latest work, scientists have turned their eyes outwards. They are planning to use pulsars, which are remnants of dead stars, to detect gravitational waves. So how do they do it? Let's discuss it. Gravitational waves were first proposed by Henry Poincare in 1905, and then predicted by Albert Einstein in 1916 using his newly developed theory of general relativity. Now there are many different sources of gravitational waves, from supernova, to rotating massive bodies, to fluctuations from the beginning of the universe. Often when we're talking about gravitational waves, we're referring to those generated from two massive bodies rotating each other and then combining. These massive bodies perturb space-time, curving it around them. When these two massive bodies orbit each other or combine, the space-time curvature interacts in a way that generates large waves or ripples that propagate out into space. We have managed to detect this type of gravitational wave using both the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, known as LIGO in the United States, and its Italian counterpart, Virgo. These interferometers work by sending a laser down two paths, which are then reflected back and measured. The time difference between these paths can be used to detect the gravitational waves. If a wave passes through the interferometer during the measurement, the space along one of the axes can be distorted, making it either shorter or longer. And this can change the time between the laser pulse detections. This is a very difficult measurement to perform, as the length of the arms for the lasers is several kilometers, while the change from the gravitational wave is around the size of an atom. Nonetheless, scientists managed to do this in 2015. This was a monumental achievement, but this type of detection is only sensitive to gravitational waves with short wavelengths. This is because of the size of the detector. A few kilometers is not very large when it comes to gravitational waves. To go to longer wavelengths, there are some proposals to build a space-based interferometer, but this will take some time to realize. But there are other techniques to use space to probe these gravitational waves, and that's where pulsars come in. Pulsars are remnants of supernova that emit highly energetic jets of particles from their magnetic poles. These magnetic poles are not aligned with the rotational pole of the pulsar. When looking at these, they will flash periodically as the rotation of the jets aligns with our direction. As pulsars are rotating extremely fast, this flashing can be on the millisecond timescale and is extremely stable, which makes them very good clocks. These are extremely interesting celestial bodies, but how are scientists using them to detect gravitational waves? Well, pulsars are scattered all throughout the galaxy, and as they are such good clocks, we can use them to detect changes in space-time. If a large gravitational wave propagates between us and the pulsar, then this will either compress or expand the, the space in between us. As a result, this will change the time it takes for that pulsar light to reach us. By taking an array of different pulsars, we can measure all of these different timings and then detect waves that are propagating throughout the galaxy. This is essentially making an artificial interferometer, but with length scales that are far greater than the size of our solar system. And it is this exact type of system that scientists have been observing. So what have they seen? In 2020 and 2021, scientists believe they began to see signs of what is called the gravitational wave background. They measured this by looking at the noise on the measurements from these pulsars. If this noise was random, it would be white noise, meaning that it is equal for all frequencies. But instead, they saw a colored noise, which they called red noise, which was greater for lower frequencies. And this is the exact type of signature we would expect from the gravitational wave background. The exact shape of this background would tell us something about what is the source, or at least the main source of the gravitational wave background in the universe, and therefore give us insight into what happened in the early universe. However, the measurements so far are not conclusive. In order to prove that this is the gravitational wave background, they would need to be able to correlate this between different pulsars. In order to do this, they need more data. Unfortunately, in December of 2020, the 300 meter 
Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico had a devastating failure, where the support cable snapped after being damaged by a hurricane, destroying the observatory. This has slowed down progress towards getting conclusive detection of the gravitational wave background, but we still may see conclusive evidence in the coming years. Once scientists have measured this gravitational wave background, hopefully it will tell us something about what the main source is and they'll give us information about what was happening in the early universe. We'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, have fun, see you next time.